All right, we are officially, ooh, we are live, cool. That worked. Fantastic. Uh, we're live for another edition of the Wrestling Underground podcast. I am your host, as always, Chad Porto. And joining me is the glorious one himself, Marcus Green. Marcus, how the hell are you? Good, man. Glad to be back. A lot of stuff happened. This will be a thick one tonight, folks, so strap in. Yeah, so we're we're, we're going to hit you up with the Bound for Glory recap, a little update on Joe Hendry, uh, some Chris Bay conversations, the WWE ID, and Maple Leaf Pro. Uh, there, I'm sure there's more things going on, but that's what we're going to be able to tackle tonight. So, you know, here we go. Uh, obviously, Bound for Glory was this weekend. Uh, I, I will say that if you're a fan of TNA, you loved the show. If you were an AW stand, you hated the show. If you were a WWE fan, you didn't tune in because WWE fans don't tune in. Oh, I had to sneeze. Um, overall, I thought this was a very good show. Light on surprises, but heavy on in what I believe to be true moments. Um, we start off with Ash and Heather by Elegance, and Heather is Heather Reckless. I don't know why they're pairing her with Ash, but whatever. They defeated Zab Brookside, uh, Brookside and Brinley Reese. And this this takes me to a conversation like with Brindley Reese, you know, Wendy Chu, you know, Will, William Regal Jr. I forget his actor, Charlie Dempsey. A lot of people are like, we give the top stars to NXT, and NXT gives us their bottom feeders, and it doesn't seem fair. And we've been saying this for months. It's not. It's a terrible. It's a terrible fucking deal. And we'll talk further about this with the WWE idea, idea. Um, but. Um, yeah, it's not great. Also, the WBID got announced the same day uh, Janelle Grant, her attorneys, demanded the WWE prove that they want to do quote unquote better, and release the uh, release other employees from their NDAs. I'm not saying the WWE and TKO timed the WBID release to drop on the same day that the Janelle Grant uh, lawyer request dropped, but they did. <laughs> yeah, with, real quick, because I know we got to we gotta keep a certain pace tonight because all we got to go through. But do you think when she said WWE employees, we, she talking past, present? All. Gotcha. Anyone that had to sign an NDA, which I'm sure involves a lot of the women, especially of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I guarantee you that the reason why the WWE doesn't want them to um, <laughs> release the NDA, so to speak, is because it, I guarantee you, I have no proof, but I guarantee you, it it includes guys like Triple H and and um, what's his name? Uh, Lauren Ives. No, don't call me Tony Khan. <laughs> oh, uh, Nick, Nick Khan. Khan. Yeah, I think it involves Nick Khan, and yeah. I think that's why they don't want to uh, release yeah, the hound, so to speak. Yeah, because I, I asked that, like I I don't. I don't have no doubt that past stars would, would want to say something if they could, but I don't think with it's much success and all the uh, momentum that's, that's you know, that they have and, and the camaraderie backstage or whatever that's talked about, that current stars would want to muck, muck waters with them right now. Mm-hmm. That stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I don't doubt that it's, it's past stars that would probably like to speak up, particularly in and or around stuff about, you know, names like Ashley and stuff like that, so. Yeah, especially with what happened to, to Ashley uh, Massaro. Um, so let's go back to the best part of WD's product, TNA. Uh, we had a 20-person gender call your shot gauntlet match. Uh, Frankie Kazarian, last one, defeating Rhino. This was a really good one. Again, uh, lacking in surprises. Rohit uh, Raju, I think, was the biggest name <laughs> that yeah. uh, came, came out. Um, there was a spot near the end with Zachary once uh, and who was it? Jake something, I think. And yeah. it looked like it got botched, so I'm pretty sure they were supposed to do some type of like big oh my god moment, but it just kind of fell apart. Yeah. But yeah, you uh, go on. You think it was a good uh the good spot the the debut I guess Zali. Oh, did they de- debut her in that? Cause I think I think she came out in there. She did come out. I don't know if that was her debut though. Gotcha. Um. I do think adding her was fine. I, the problem is that when you have like Jake something and Rhino and a few other guys in there, bringing in like who, who was it? Um, oh 
what's her name? The little itty bitty one. What's her name? Oh, um, the one of the um the tag champions. The the Barquia the the Barquia. Oh oh, Tasha Steele. Tasha Steele. She's like four foot eight. Yeah, she's uh, uh, yeah, yeah. She's she's diminutive, but I I never complain about seeing her. But yeah. Right, so like that was just one of those. I'm like, uh, maybe we don't do intergender anymore. I, you you yeah. could easily do like your own knockouts yeah. version instead of doing like a, a an this, awful tag. This... Ma- maybe do like a knockouts tag team gauntlet match, or like. Yeah, definitely, definitely a gauntlet. Because the only person that's believable in this, like, you're not sending Lish out there. No. Um, but you don't have enough Jordans for that to work. And, and and you know that's fair. That that's real fair. I do want to check something up though. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hop over to a cage match real quick. Is that, I, I, real quick, I do, I do I do feel like our boy Jake got next on something. He, <laughs> no he, pun intended. He better. Um, probably. If I had to guess, cause let's see, wins wins destination X, but we kind of passed that at this point. Yeah, the next one up is uh, Genesis. Yeah, so I feel, I feel like let you let Mike hold it up until then. Potentially do an option C because I do not want them to jack Mike around again on the title, particularly when he's having the, another hot string of matches. Um, and I feel like Jake could be a, a, a guy to pass that X Division uh, title next to if they do what they're supposed to do with Bailey. And that's going to be one of those things to keep an eye on because it does seem like Moose is going to get involved with Bailey here in the immediate scene. So, mm-hmm. so they may be finding a way to get Moose back in the main event scene. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That does take us to the opener. Mike Bailey versus El Hijo del Vikingo uh, just had a, a match of the year. And the thing is, is, I don't even know if it's the best match on the card. <laughs> uh, Bailey and Vikingo went at it. They had a lot of cool spots. They love the edge of that ring. Vikingo, who came back like maybe a month ago, is now hurt again uh, because of something he tried to do during uh, the impact tapings. But I'll tell you what, uh, it doesn't seem to be as severe as the first time around, I hope. And the match he got with Bailey is fantastic. Didn't Bailey face off with uh, Okada last year? Or was it Osprey? No, it was definitely Osprey because I'm I'm still I'm still mentally recovering from that damn hidden blade, um that he that he caught him with. Um, yeah, Bailey's just I mean like you said it on 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 X man, dude's a stud. Um, I just pray and I hope because I know he be having kick pads on. I don't know if he be having knee pads on. I don't think he does. Because that Meteora, just any of his knee his knee moves at this point because he and we're gonna talk about MLP briefly. He had a match, I think that was with um, Phantasmo. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. that was just a point in that match where he was just missing all his moves where he jumped and landed on his knees. And I'm like, bro, Bailey, I love you, but you are vastly, you are quickly about to um, um, freaking Sting's protege. Why am I blanking on his name? Uh, Darby Allen. Darby, mm-hmm. yeah, thank you. You about to Darby Allen your knees out here. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Uh, briefly, uh, to sidebar in the fan, ta- uh, uh, um, what's his full, full gimmick? It's, it's L Fantas. Yeah. L, L, yeah, L Fantasmo, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ELP L Fantasmo, um, he's going to be missing some time as he undergoes, uh, cancer treatment. So best wishes to him. Yeah. Good vibes know. to him. Vikingo got hurt on the Sunday after the event, and we're not like we're we're we still got to touch on the the more concerning story here later. Yeah, uh, but we're gonna get through Bound for Glory first. Yeah, great opener though. Yeah, yeah fantastic Fine. opener. Match theory contender. Um, worst match on the card for me was the tag team match, and I love Jody Threat. I love Danny Luna. I love Rosemary. Up until like five months ago, or not five months, uh, five weeks, maybe three weeks ago, it felt like Rosemary was going to be taking on Jordan Grace in the main, uh, at Bound for Glory. And then they just shifted into something completely different. And I don't know why. And Wendy Chu's not very good. And this match sucked. And I don't know why. I don't know why we had to deal with it. I don't know why we had to put up with it. But at least Jody threatened Danny Luna didn't drop the belts again for no reason. 
Yeah, it's no, you're not absolutely right about that. Um, habit form like a tag team, but it does feel like I'm guessing, like, real quick, where would you rank? Um, because we had this absolutely sick tag team of, of Kelly Klein and then Monster Slammerich. Mm -hmm. That that kind of felt well, I don't think either one of us felt like they treated that the way that they should have. Um, then that then they came up with something off the fly that actually really was clever and worked in militia, and now you got Danny Threat and Luna. So I'm not I'm not gonna say Luna is like the third rank of that because uh, they're really good. Um, and hopefully they team to book them like that. But yeah, it does feel like they're potentially falling into what well, what we've been talking about has been happening with Grace's reign for most of this year with the lackluster competition. Mm -hmm. A lot of ways because she's not if she if she had competition all throughout this reign the way she had it bound for glory this is all time reign yeah i agree in wrestling not just tna in wrestling but um yeah that, that's not what that is so it's gonna be interesting seeing what they do to fill that tag team gap they probably go to end up you know throwing steals back in there because i don't think they're gonna put her against um Marcia. it might be a wash but uh yeah they, they definitely need to do some with rosemary and hopefully they done with Wendy Chu because it just that 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 it wasn't working. No, yeah, it it wasn't great. Um, hopefully they can give Spitfire more to do going forward. Um, I don't know what happens with Jordan Grace next either, but we'll find yeah. out come January when she leaves. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, Alexander and Steve Macklin was a pretty solid affair. I'm not a Macklin guy, but when they went to the whole handcuff uh, scene. And Macklin was uh, had the chance to break free, and he's like, "No, no I'm going to beat him with, with my hands tied behind his back." And how it went terribly, terribly wrong for him. I actually like that. I thought that was a cool story, and it actually played into Macklin uh, being so into his own, you know, high on his own supply, for lack of a better term, that he actually thought he could beat yeah, Alexander without any hands. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I think I think we was Dallas. I'm probably, but I'm definitely more the Macklin fan here, um, and, and that's fine. Um, you, you feel, you really feel it comes off. Um, all guts, no go. And the fact that, and and so much of this, uh, particularly with this match, and then we're gonna get to the the, the fantastic uh, knockouts match. So much of this is full circle. Like this match wasn't, this card wasn't just full of great one-off matches. This is like full circle with with Macklin and Alexander because this was a complete opposite last year. Mm hmm. Like what Macklin was, he would have absolutely zip tied Alexander, particularly when he was either had the title or being crazed going after Alexander with the title. He would have absolutely done what Alexander did and zip tied him during the match. And Alexander feels like somebody that would have absolutely been like, "Eff it, I'm gonna throw my body to the wind." Like it's cr like doing a suicide dive without your arms is insane. So it's uh. Yeah, it's it's nasty work, but I think and um, like real quick, how you feel like this heel turn for for Alexander's been working? I like it. Um, um, they're not going full into like the I'm a heel, I can't win it without help. Yeah, da da da. He's he's just violent and he's he he's very dismissive yeah. of other people with his physicality, and it's nice. Yeah. The concern I have is he may be leaving soon as well. So I don't know how invested to get into this. Same with Mike Bailey. I don't know how long he's sticking around for. You know, here's hoping. Uh, speaking of guys sticking around, PCO defeated Matt Cardona in a Monsters Ball match to retain the Digital Media and International Heavyweight Wrestling Championships. They foregone the, you know, 24 hours, no food, no water, no light motif for this one i didn't like that but whatever uh this was a stupid match that i enjoyed thoroughly <laughs> um they did a door spot that i think uh, pco was supposed to break through the door and like a spear and it didn't work and then the door fell on the cardona and it kind of broke and i was just like that's funny as shit <laughs> yeah it's uh it's it's interesting because this is it's almost tailor made for both of them really i mean i, I'm, I like you like half the point of the Monsters Ball is the pre-match step, mm -hmm. um, and I get and I guess it's like it feels like PCO is doing that anyway, but that that that's still a key component to that match. Um, but yeah, I just feel like it's tailor made. Obviously, PCO is is is, is just a monster, and, and Cardona has down there fashioned himself as a mini hardcore uh, mini icon with all the stuff he did in GCW. So this. 
like you said, this was a car crash that worked. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's PCO is a good uh, digital champion. I don't know how much longer they go keep it on him, but I, it's it's working. Agreed. Uh, Mike Santana defeated Moose in probably the best non-step, non-title singles match on the card. Um, this was brilliant. Uh, I loved it. Santana looked like a million bucks, and, and Moose continues to prove that he's one of the best big men workers in the game today. Uh, oh, absolutely. I don't, I don't have a lot of comments about it, but it was great to see Santana get the win. Yeah, yeah I mean, look, they've been properly building Santana. Like, I don't feel like... Like they 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 do good jobs of building people up, and certainly in this particular regime, have done a great job. But it feels like, in terms of a proper how people view building match after match after feud after feud, going into the main event scene, they're doing that 100% with Santana. He's delivering on all cylinders. Really feel like he elevated his game in this match, because I'm pretty sure most people only saw him as a tag team guy. And he's just continued with every match to break that break out that mold. Beautiful 450 he hit in this match along with some other stuff. Moose, absolutely, like you said, showed why he's been a multi-time world champion in this match. Uh, one of the best big men. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's kind of that, that that guy now where, um, and congrats to Ronald for going in the Hall of Fame. They they talked about it in his, uh, his, uh, his HOF video about, like, he's the guy that people have to go through when they want to prove themselves. I feel like that's Moose's spot now. I think when you talk about the main event scene, yes. Yeah. If you can't work with Moose, you can't work. I think that's fair. Uh, Masha Slamovich and Jordan Grace had maybe the best match on the card. It was only two, like less than 13 minutes. Physical. Like, physical. Mini kaiju. And it was fantastic. Ma- and here's the thing. Masha maybe should have won the belt, what, two years ago? At Bound for Glory in 2022? So to see her get the belt now is much earned, but to see it when Grace is about to leave, hard. Yeah, yeah you know it's interesting. It's uh, this is another full circle thing because she's Jordan turned into um, for for Marsha what Deanna was for Jordan. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really great one. Now, obviously, like you said, the the potentiality for her you know, exiting notwithstanding, like, it's just been a great full circle thing because they have seemingly been telling that she can't beat her store for the better part of two years. Mm-hmm. Like, they go all the way back. I, I was I was scrolling, looking on YouTube. I'm like, they go all the way back to Explosion. Yeah. When mm-hmm. Grace had a completely different look and they've been telling us, so, like, they had a great knockout, last knockout standing match. Then that great match they had at BFG to get all the way back here, which had some stumbling parts because, like you said, there was all of a sudden turn, but it works. It even works in the fact that they use this to get her to be English speaking now, which is another uh, cool thing. But yeah, man, like you know, I say this about matches that that go above and beyond when I'm on the True Penny show. But the only thing I can say about this match, you got to go watch it. Mm-hmm. We can talk about this match that we blew in the face. You got to go watch it. Like, this is, if, if you have any gripes, anything about women's wrestling, and, and, you know, you watch this match and don't walk away uh, having your your uh, mind changed, you you just you just stuck in your ways, man. Those women put on, that that might actually be my favorite match of the year. Uh, the cage match says that they went 16 minutes and 44 seconds, so I think that might be more accurate. Uh, mm-hmm. It's also the highest rated match on the card, according to Cage Match, with an 8.82. Uh, Moose and Santa, Santana at 7.13. Macklin and Alexander at 7.0. And Bailey and El Vikingo had an 8.34. Next yeah, up, though, fun. and I get why this wasn't the main event for a variety of reasons. One, I feel like they only put Joe Hendry in, the main, in this match because fans would tune in and show up. But... As much as I like Joe Hendry, fuck, I am not impressed with some of his matches lately. And, you know, just looking at the match guide uh, rating, a 4.51 with Nick Nemeth. Nemeth's, you know, 45. He's not, you know, young, but he can still work. He can still bump. And I feel like they had to overbook this because they're not confident in Joe Hendry as a main event wrestler. And, God, I... As much of a personality as as much as a character as he is, and as entertaining as he is from week to week, 
I feel like if you can't at least headline a show and wrestle on your own, like have a one-on-one 12, 14, 15 minute match, you can't be a headliner. And I feel like that's the issue that we're running into with Joe Hendry is that as good as he is everywhere else outside of the ring, in the ring, he's not that dynamic. Mm. He, it feels like everyone around him has to go above and beyond to get him looks. And Henry feels kind of like John Cena circa 2003. But here's the thing. I think if John Cena was coming up in 2000, in 2024 the way he was in 2003, I don't think John Cena becomes the headliner. Because our expectations for what a headliner should be in the ring have dramatically changed in 21 years. You can't do what John Cena did in 2003 in 2024 and expect to be a headliner. Joe Hendry in 2003, headliner. 2024, yeah, we have guys like Will Ospreay, Speedball yeah, Mike Bailey. Uh, kind of a little different. Yeah. Swerve right now. You know, he yeah. was. But like you look at those three guys, they're not even headliners in their own company right now. Swerve was. But, like, Speedball's yeah. not. You know, you look at Orange Cassidy, he's not. Like, the talent is so much better better yes yes fast yeah that's that incredible like yeah you look everywhere and it's like it, it's, it literally looks like an all-time pro video game it does um and yeah i, I definitely wanted to talk about this with you because you were on the joe hendry train before i was hell you mm. helped get me on the joe hendry train um just as a character before i even like i think the match that really made me turn my eye at him to turn my eye towards him in terms of performance was that match he had with moose and I'm like, oh, he's not just a, you know, character guy. This guy can go when he was on a great digital media run. But, yeah, to your your uh, point, like, him going to these bigger, longer matches it is a thing. And, and, and my boy Nick, who's one of my favorites, um, it's just so dynamic. There ain't really a lot of holes in this game, if any. Um, so, it, it you know, it shows. But I think my, what I was thinking about it, what I wanted to ask you, Specifically, I'm like, okay, do you think – it's a two-part question. Do you think they missed the boat on putting the strap on him? And and if it is still in the plans, do you think it's it's going to matter as much as it should if it happens? They have not missed the boat. And – I do not think the matter of which uh, or the importance of which the title one will matter has been affected. I don't think it will it would would have ever been that massive. The best way I can describe what a Joe Henry title one would be is, for lack of a better term, an orgasm. <laughs> it's going to feel mm. great in the moment, but afterwards, then what? You can't really build around Joe Hendry as a solo star because he's having mediocre matches at the top of the card with some of your best workers. Now, that Moose match was fantastic, but also I've been saying for years Moose is one of the most underrated big men in the history of wrestling. That he had a match with Alberto Del Rio in Oklahoma. <laughs> in 2019 or 2018 or whatever it was. And it was an absolute nonstop banger in front of like 700 people. And I was like, Moose is a, is a headliner. He, he, he still is, you know, that match with Santana is, is nothing but proof of how talented he is. But if you can't get more than a mediocre match out of Nick Nemeth, I have concerns. And I didn't always have concerns with Joe Hendry. The concerns yeah. have been recent. And I don't know if he's splitting too much between NXT and TNA. I don't know if he's hurts. I don't know if he's just not as good as he needs to be to hang on this level. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think him being in NXT the way that he was, do you think that is a part of the reason why you, you kind of, you know, lamented on him? Or do you think that just helped you get there quicker? I think you got there quicker seeing how mediocre he was with Ethan Page. Now, granted, Ethan Page is mediocre. But he didn't do anything that makes you think, oh, yeah, 
no doubt about it, he's Will Ospreay with a mic, right? He's not. And I think that's the issue. He, you can still run with him as a world champion. But you got to be like Bill Goldberg precise on who you put him with, how you promote him, how you book him. And I don't think this was the right night for him to do that. That being said, I did like the match to an extent because I loved the whole Frank Kazarian faking the uh, the cash in. Oh, he's been an MVP. Oh, yeah. Well, Fantastic. Uh, yeah, he's been, yeah. He was so good in that role, I thought he should have won the title. And I feel like if you if there was a missed opportunity, that was it. Although he still do you, does have the briefcase. Do you think that's the direction that they are uh, potentially going? Because if Joe could get finally get his moment and then cash screw him. Maybe and like that could be interesting, but I hate those real quick title changes. Yeah. So if anything, I would want Nemeth to lose to Kazarian and then maybe gotcha. build a Joe Hendry taking it off of Kazarian. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That that actually works. That that actually hits. That actually hits better. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Kaz was ace at that. But like he did some of the best quick counts I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it did him going out to the to the thing, and then Joe like, no, you're not calling no shot. You're calling this match. That was, that was a good, great little moment. Then there was also some double in the face. <laughs> some great clotheslines from Hell's, and like he's like, I, I'm uh, I'm ready to get back in the ring, and I'm like. Yo, uh, I'd be into seeing what he could do. I'm not overly enthusiastic, but if he gets eyes on the product, you know I'm a, I'm about gets, at least trying it. Yeah, I mean, look, just those. I, I I try to watch some of those. I end up watching those uh, clothesline from hell compilation like once a year, thanks to wrestling Twitter. Yeah, uh, and that's just absolutely sick. And he feels like he's getting back and forth. Like that stem cell stuff is doing wonders for a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping uh, boy Big E gets added to that equation. But um, yeah, this was a great match. Like, did because we've seen in the past with the TNA have absolutely torpedoed their main events or their world title matches that weren't the main event because of overbooking. This this actually was like overbooked in, in a way that 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 almost heightened the match in, in a way. Um, so yeah, um, like I said, you see why it wasn't the main event. And if if the booking was because of a decision we're gonna make here. We need to send this crowd home happy, particularly because this is a sellout. Then mm. they made the right decision yeah. for the for the for the placement of the match, definitely. So, I agree. I think they made the right call uh, because the main event I thought was fantastic. Uh, cage match doesn't agree that it got a five point nine eight, but I thought the main event was pretty damn good. Uh, the Hardys defeated ABC in the system to win the tag belts. Uh, Matt and Jeff looked pretty good. Matt's fifty. Jeff's forty seven. And I thought they looked fantastic for their ages. Uh, a lot of cool spots. Uh, I love the dual chair throwing spot. The spot where they were both on opposite sides of the ladder, walking across. I think it was who uh, Jeff and Ace Austin. Uh, that was in- incredible. Eddie and Brian Myers worked very well together. The one spot that I think was kind of a, a dumb idea was Jeff trying to slide down the uh, the ladder with the chair. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. It's a bad idea. Bad, <laughs> bad idea. Uh, that being said, the Hardys are the tag champs, and uh, all in all, I thought it was a great match, and I was super excited to see what would come out of this. You know, yeah. Eddie looks to be uh, getting himself back together in shape wise. Ace uh, and Bay have been probably the best tag team with the most personality in wrestling since they formed. So. I was excited to see what happens next. And then, of course, we get the terrible news. But we're still not there yet. We have to touch on uh, a little bit of the Joe Hendry of it all. Uh, Apparently, TNA had uh, decided two weeks back that uh, Hendry would not be winning the title of Mount Glory. That's about it. That's only real news. Yeah. It's... uh. And, and hopefully they do go with that idea that you mentioned about the the way you know because Kaz they it's interesting like they are not just putting on good matches they're actually telling quality stories mm-hmm. along with it at the same time because they actually have been building to this like since Kaz has turned heel it's been all about getting him uh, getting to that world title um, so making him 
the winner to call your shot on the night he has to special guest referee the world main event only added an element of intrigue, a high level of intrigue to that match. Then him trying to do it and then not getting it, I think leaves the door wide open to go in the direction that you mentioned in terms of who's going to lose and then setting up for that, that few that could potentially get injured or eventual win. But um, going into this match, yeah, it was, it was just brilliant. Um, it felt like, because obviously they haven't had a full Metal Mayhem match, particularly with the tag in years. And it also felt like they did like a tribute to all the Hardys ladder matches at the same time. Yeah, especially with that yeah. one. Uh, what, who, Brian Myers got speared, I think. Yeah, so uh, that that was really cool. They also did this thing, and, and you know, you know, because um, like, you know, everybody's been tweeting like, how crazy is it that we're, in a, you know, on Beyonce's internet in 2024 and in the same week, the most ever seen guns are tag team champions and the hardest of TNA champions again. Um, but for me personally, I, I appreciated the hardest win more because it, it actually felt like they built to it. Even though this felt like the direction they were always going to go with them coming back in the first place. Um, it, it, it felt earned more, but, um, yeah, it was just it was just a fantastic outing, and like you said, um, they booked it they booked it right, they booked it well, and they sent that crowd, that Detroit crowd, that showed up and showed out. They sent them home happy. So, and that's where we kind of gotta shift gears a bit because on the next night, uh, Chris Bay in the middle of a match with the Hardys in the tag team match. Uh, and now, now I heard this two different ways. So I don't know which one is accurate. Uh, one story says that Matt Hardy and Bay collided heads. The other one said that Bay took a twist of fate and went limp afterwards. I don't know what happened. And details are sketchy. Information is limited. But Bay was rushed to the hospital on Sunday night. Monday morning, news broke that Bay had had uh, surgery. The word is not used was emergency surgery. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I was uh, an athlete for a long time, and uh, every time I ever had to have surgery, it was weeks or months in advance. Like, you, like we're going to do it on uh, December whatever. Okay? All right. It's three months from now. Even broken necks. Your neck's broken. We need to do a spinal fusion, yada, yada, yada. It'll be in a couple months. Okay. To do it the same night, call it whatever. That's an emergency surgery. You come in on a Sunday night at 10 p.m. and they put you into surgery. That's an emergency surgery. And that's concerning. Um, There's been zero information. And I, I said this on Twitter. I want to say it again. I don't think we're owed anything. From Chris Bay. The man has the right to convalesce in peace and not have to give anyone his, his medical history. That being said, usually when, when a guy gets injured, we know pretty much like it's a torn labrum, it's a broken leg, yada, yada, yada. We haven't heard anything. Just knew that he hurt his neck and he had to have uh, emergency surgery on Sunday night. Somebody commented or left a, a, a message or, or what have you and said this has Draws energy. And for those who don't remember, Draws was a pro wrestler in the uh, late 90s in a match against D'Lo Brown on SmackDown. Uh, D'Lo uh, mistimed and slipped on a running power bomb and jammed Draws' neck to the point where it broke and it paralyzed him instantly. And I'm concerned that that's what happened to Bay to some degree. I, it's, it's just a fear. There is no facts. I don't know. I am just concerned. And what's most concerning is how everyone in wrestling is donating to him. That shows me that this is bad. I'm glad people are stepping up for him. Um, I'm sure he's 
getting the best medical care. I'm sure I'm hoping TNA is helping foot the bill. And I'm sure, you know, the wrestlers who are donating and the fans who are donating are to help him post release from the hospital. But this doesn't sound good. And I don't think people realize how bad this actually seems with limited uh, news coming out about his condition, the severity of the injury, and the immediacy of the surgery that he had. Those all make it sound very damning, very devastating. Um, you know, like, think about what happened to Big E. He broke his neck. But he was moving around. He, I think he uh, tried to walk to the back. Uh, I may be wrong on that, but like he wasn't like he wasn't paralyzed. He was in tremendous amounts of pain and had to go through multiple surgeries. And like you mentioned, you know, hopefully stem cell can get him back in the ring. But we've known since the injury that you know he, it was it was a painful injury that I'm sure limited some functionality and and whatnot. But he was for the most part, especially after the surgery, is fine. But he didn't have to go into emergency surgery that night. I think he had the operation later that week. Because when you have that kind of money, you get to skip the line. But it wasn't the same night he got hurt. So that tells me that what happened to Bay is significantly worse. And what happened to Big E ended his career. And mm. I think what happened to Bay could have ended his life. Now, again, that's hyperbole. That's That's... You know, conjecture, that speculation, it's not fact. I don't know. But yeah. I do think people need to brace themselves so that when the information and the news does eventually come out, that it's not going to be good. Because nothing in this situation is, is normal in terms of yeah. what happens usually when a guy gets hurt. Yeah, because it, it, it and, and what you're ultimately speaking to, like you said, I always want to make it clear that we, you know, <laughs> We're not close enough to the situation to have any definitive facts. This is, you know, educated opinions. Um, just the immediacy and the fervor in which the, um, the wrestling community responded and the way that they responded um, with the prayers up and, uh, you know, the, the GoFundMe. And, it, and, it, and it, it felt like they were responding to information that they had because of mm -hmm. them being to the situation and, and we not you know, that their proximity to the situation and, and, and I was being third party, obviously. Um, so I, it, it, it does feel like there's so much credence to what you said just because of how, you know, things were, were, were going down. But uh, we do know that he is, uh, I guess, seemingly out of the woods because I think it's his best friend that's been speaking on his behalf. Um, so we know he's out of the woods, but to your point again, him being out of the woods doesn't mean that there's, a, that there's all clear. Um, to certainly on the potential, you know, what it looks like going forward. So we got to wait for that. But um, I always do appreciate, you know, as a fan, seeing how this community was, you know, um, getting outside of the muck, which can be the cesspool of fandom when it comes to the internet wrestling community. Um, just how that com how the, the actual wrestling community comes together for their people. Yeah. yeah. You know, I always, you know, appreciate that. Chris Bay is, you know, He's been ace since the first time, you know, we saw him and, and, and all signs point to him being a quality guy behind the scenes, behind that character as well. So that's great. And, uh, yeah, you just hate to hear, it, man, freak accident. You listen off to people that you did immediately made me think back to Sorensen. Mm -hmm. I remember watching that and how scary that was and how, you know, thankfully he's on the better end of that now, but he wasn't deep in the woods there for a minute. And, you know, we've seen other instances like freak stuff happen all the time. And, and you know, injuries will be a part of the thing. But you just hate to, you know, for the stuff to happen to guys like this. And, uh, yeah, but like I said, the community came together for him and, and I think they still rallying for him. And so, uh, yeah, we just go keep him in our thoughts, send him good wishes. And uh, hope, hopefully the, the sun shines brighter than what it, it appears that it could be down the line. So. TNA is doing a yeah. whatnot auction. <clears throat> and... Um... AJ Francis is donating the shirt he wore when he had his infamous tumble out of the ring. Oh, that's uh, right. Pro Wrestling Tees has produced a We Heart Bay shirt with all proceeds, I think every dollar, going to uh, Chris Bay. Uh, there's a GoFundMe. So, like, the wrestling community has come together to, to support this man. And, like you mentioned, that's a good thing considering how toxic it can be. 
And it's only going to get more toxic. Uh, WWE has announced that they're launching a new indie wrestling development called the WWE ID. Basically, they're going to start, you know, for lack of a better term, tagging independent wrestlers who are on the come up. Um, Reality of Wrestling, The Nightmare Factory, and a few others uh, are, are going to be the, the home base. Oh, they have the, the list right here. Reality of Wrestling, Nightmare Factory, Black and Brave Academy by Seth Rollins, the Elite Pro Wrestling Training Center out of Concord, and Knox, Knock X Pro out of L.A. I think that's supposed to be Knox, but they can't find yeah. it <laughs> Yeah, since you know, since they you know making NXT the official official third brand now, they're just gonna make all these wrestling schools. Ironically enough, conveniently enough, already loosely, I mean not loosely, already kind of tied to uh, WWE via the the guys that run state wrestling schools. They're just gonna turn them into uh, like uh, developmentals. So I don't think <laughs> NXT is getting the third brand treatment at all. Um, they're still calling up guys and putting them on other rosters. They're still running it in the WWE uh, developmental, what was that, the Performance Center. Mm -hmm. They only drew 3,000 fans to Halloween Havoc. They don't have any headliners on the men's side. Like They're stuck with Ethan Page. That's how bad things are. Lexus King is a flop. It's a developmental brand, you know, full and total. And the funny thing was Cody Rhodes is like, yeah, it's a grooming ground. And I'm like, Cody... (laughs) The fuck Mm. did you just say, you moron? (laughs) Oh, Cody is the stupidest human being I think I know. A grooming ground on the same day, the day before Janelle Grant uh, demands that the uh, non-disclosures be thrown out. You call it a grooming ground, Cody, you stupid, bleach blind douchebag. Me and Chad just look at each other, look look back at Cody and go, No! It's like a horror movie. This is going to be bad. This is going to be a bad situation because these these um, indie uh, groups now have you know backing of a billion dollar company and the ability to sway people from working other places and and, and to try to wrangle them into specific paddockses and almost uh, in a way. Uh, uh, control the talent pipeline with with not money but promise the promise of opportunity which has always been their selling point and everyone's like well no no you can't be upset no this won't hurt that you're being hyperbolic you're being you're just being a you know just chicken little skies falling it happened in the uk and i know I'm everyone's saying that. Like that didn't happen right it happened it happened in the uk that's not all it's not all. It happened 20 years earlier when it when it bought out WCW and ECW and then did nothing with it. Killed the scene. That's not all. <laughs> it happened in uh, the uh, late 80s when they uh, championed and, and ate up all of the other uh, territories, making it impossible to work anywhere. Chad Historically. Don't even have to keep going back. Chad don't even have to go back. Look what they're lightly doing with TNA. Who have become, and, and I was watching a recent interview with with Deanna Parazzo, and now she talked about how she basically got reinvigorated um, through a time in in, in, uh, in TNA. She basically said, like, it felt like that TNA was the island of misfit toys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but where, where, why were these guys considered misfit toys? Because they got they got dismissed from WWE, but look what they're doing now with talents like Joe Hendry and... Um, like Jordan, a sick. not to bring up the word again, quoting Cody, but they're grooming them. It feels like a way mm-hmm. or the talents that they feel like is worth their brand stamp away and away from the company. Like they, 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 uh, they, they, they have... really do come off like that, that smoothie smiles, uh, like NFL person that, that, that they sent out to recruit at these like local parties with these guys. It's like, Oh my God, I always wanted to play for such and such and such and such. Like, yeah, come on, man. Come to some parties with me. I take you around the industry, get your buzz, get your name around. Like we know that most of these guys want to end up in WWE and this is just going to entice a bunch of people to be like, yeah, I don't need to be no indie darling. I Marcus, they have Dragon Lee on speed. 
Oh yeah, I saw that. And by the way, you do know there's people defending that whole concept because they were like, Andrade was on speed. Now he's in one of the top views in the company. Um, who else was on speed? Uh, they, they now he's in a new company. Yeah, they were like Candice LeRae was on speed. Now she's going to get a, a tag team title match at Crown Jewel. Uh, such and such, somebody else was on speed. Now they're in something prominent. I'm like, that's not. However, you need to piece that together for that to work for you. Fine, but WWE speed is is in the realm of of main event and velocity and heat. Yeah. And what was the other one that they had? Uh, Jack that was uh, metal ECW. Um, the freaking the morning show that they had John Cena pop up on one time. Saturday morning slam. That. Yeah, it's you're right. Random. Come on, bro. Mixed match, uh, mixed match tag challenge. You know, you pick. Yeah. Pick. Speaking of picking, the BID is going to be terrible. Uh, but um, kind of in, in in a maybe we were wrong to be upset. <laughs> we got Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling. Scott hey. Demore. We got two nights. We got Forge and Excellence One, Forge and Excellence Two. And again, I, I even when this happened uh, back in January, I was like, guys, I hate to break it to you. Scott Demore is not a good booker. <laughs> and then he came out with Maple Leaf Pro. And he proved me right. I like Scott Demore. I think he's a great trainer. I think he's a great coach. I think he can have some great ideas. I don't think he can manage a wrestling company that is not star-studded. There were some good matches, especially on night one. The six-man tag with Phantasmo, Josh Alexander and Stu Grayson taking on Alex Zane, Rocky Romero, and Trevor Lee. Great. Then you had to sit through QT Marshall versus Boop Hinder Gujar. Okay. Then we had a, a pretty lackluster uh, women's tag match with Kylie Ray and Aurora Tevis, I think is how you say that, Tevis. Take on Laney Luck and Taylor Rising. I like Taylor Rising. This is not a good match. Uh, we had an IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team four-way match with Jet Setters. I didn't realize Kevin Knight and Kushida had won those belts. Uh, defeating Aiden Prince and El Reverso, Rogue Squadron, which was Rohit and Sheldon Jean, and Brent Banks and Johnny Swinger. They put Johnny Swinger in a 16-minute tag team match. I don't, I, again, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Rohan Raja defeated Jake something to win the PWA ch- uh, Champions Grail title. Uh, Rohan uh, uh, Raja is the former Gushinder Singh and Tony Cage. I think he wrestled for TNA for a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, in 2018 and 2019, he had uh, 19 matches, 18 matches, 13 matches. Uh, he was actually billed as being some big deal and nothing happened. Uh, Giselle Shaw defeated Miyu Yamashita. Kaneshke, uh, Kaneshke Takeshita. Tekshi- why can't I say his name? Marcus, why can't Kaneshke I say his name? Takeshita. Takeshita. There it is. Because there's supposed to be like a J in there with the way you say it, and there's not. Takeshita. Takeshka. Uh, he defeated Mike Bailey in a match that uh, apparently the Observer gave five stars. Okay. Uh, I don't believe that. Takeshka is not that good, but whatever. And in the match of the night that everyone is still talking about, Bully Ray defeated uh, Raj Deji, a.k.a. Jinder Mahal, uh, in one of the worst tables matches of all time, I'm told. Uh, <laughs> I didn't watch this match. I skipped it because Bully Ray. It has a 1.09 rating. I yeah, can't I would, imagine. yeah. If I can help it, and most times I can, I'm not watching anything with Bully Ray or QT Marshall or anywhere near it. Yeah, and they put them in two separate matches. Then on the next night, we had Johnny Swinger and Raj Singh lose to Bryce Hansen and Brent Banks. Taylor Rising defeated Aurora Tevez. Aiden Prince and the Jet Setters defeated Rocky Romero, Rahan Raja, and Rohit Raju. Uh, in a Q. P.W. Cater title match. El Reverso defeated K- Classy Ali. Uh, in a tag team match, Miyu Yamashita and Kylie Ray defeated Harley Cameron and Laney Luck. In a six-way scramble cycle, Mike defeated Alex Zane, uh, Jake Something, Sheldon Jean, Stu Grayson, and Trevor Lee. 
Mike Bailey defeated El Phantasmo. Bufinder Gouger and Raj Deji defeated Bully Ray and uh, QT Marshall in a tag team match. What the fuck? Athena retained the Ring of Honor Women's Championship against Giselle Shaw in a 23-minute affair. And Kaneshka Takeshka defeated uh, Josh Alexander to retain the AEW International Championship in a match that got four and three-quarter stars from the Observer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, solid, solid first outing for the promotion. Uh, I think those two main events were a, absolutely ace for me. Um, it was real cool to see my boy Rohit again. Um Real cool to see Athena. Giselle, you know, continues to prove that she's, you know, she she she's solid, but um, she, you know, she's very much the bride maze, not the bride. And in that uh, in that instance, I always put on some bangers. But yeah, um, so it was cool to see. I, I think this, if I, I don't know what's the whole idea going forward, but I think if he, you know, keeps the more uh, meaning, if he kind of goes forward and keeps putting on shows like this, it'll work. I don't know, like you said, a full on promotion is the idea or is he doing something like um what Dreamer was doing with hardcore house of hardcore. So uh, Dreamer was trying to do something big with House of Hardcore. Um I think there was talks of him getting a, a weekly T V show on Twitch. I don't know exactly what happened. I think maybe COVID, maybe something else happened, but it ended any hopes of them having a weekly show. Like they even crowned Willie Mack as their TV champion with the idea that they're going to get weekly television. So right now, Maple Leaf Pro could be in the same vein of House of Hardcore where it's a super indie, but out of Canada and with a loose relationship with with AEW and Ring of Honor. Um, It could also be a weekly show. We may not get a third show. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I do want the best for Scott Demore, and I do want Maple Leaf Pro to be good. But Maple Leaf Pro needs to be good on its own, not just as this glorified super indie with guys like Bully Ray and, and uh, Jinder Mahal on your roster. Like They need their own stars, their own look. Will we get it? I don't know. It's a tough question to ask, Marcus. I don't know. But I'm optimistic. Any final thoughts you have on this week's show before we head off? I think we lost Marcus for the moment. Oh, sorry about that. I'm back. Um, muted myself. Yeah, uh, that, no, that pretty much uh, clears everything. Um, you know, things have been, like you said, is there's been some interesting things that have been happening ironically enough at the same time that the things have been brought up or brought back up um in regards to lawsuits and quotes and stuff dropping around you know at the same time awkwardly enough um but yeah i mean lot, lots going on outside of wrestling lots going on in wrestling um go check out um apparently this AEW show uh some some stuff some stuff went down on that so um but yeah man i'm just i'm just i'm just happy for, like you said Want the best with Demore because I don't feel like we don't get what we get to right now with TNA without what he did to get it back to where you know uh, taking back his name. Mm-hmm. So you know, all the well wishes and good luck for him. Uh, and I'm just happy to again be a TNA fan right now because at the beginning of the year I didn't feel like we'd have a moment like this again, uh, like true real momentum, legitimately sold out shows, and just excitement around the brand and what's going on. You know, so. It, it, you know, it feels good uh, to be a TNA fan, a wrestling fan in general, because it's just a lot going on across the industry. You know, we just seen um, where, you know, Omega's going to make a pop-up appearance at uh, New Japan, so he's getting back into the mix in some certain ways. He's another one that could have, who, whose health could have took him another direction. Mm-hmm. Um, barely out of here, so, you know, it's always good to see him up and, and, and about and stuff like that. So, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff, but... Um, yeah, just just keep watching, people. Chad Chad says it every week, but it's it's true. It's a lot going on. Try to stay out of the muck and just uh just enjoy. It. With that being said, we're gonna wrap it up there. Uh, you can check us out at the website realnerdcorp.com, r e a l n e r d c r p dot com. We're on Twitter at n e r d c r p. We are also on Twitch TV and YouTube dot com at Wrestling Underground. You can find 
Mark us on Twitter at Paradox Kid, P A R A D O X K I D. That's me. You can also find him on his other podcast, The True Brandy Show, over on Twitter at T R U E P E N N Y S H O W. You can find me on Twitter at Chad Nerdcorp, C H E D N E R D C R P, and on the Instagram at Chad Spoto at C H E D S P H O T O H U T. Uh, we'll be back next Tuesday for another edition of the Wrestling Underground Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. Remember, as always, to watch more wrestling. And Marcus, take us home.